Okie dokie, artichokies. Hey, I wonder if it might not be set up. Is the mic? Bum, bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. May need to. <clears throat> hello, hello, hello. Okay, there is some audio. Let's see. Let's see if I can get it with the audio sound. Input. Yeah. Hey. Sorry if you hear this. Cool. Great. Okay. I think you guys can. I think everything is good. Let's see. Chat. Pop out, chat. Pop out. Come hang out over here. Uh. Hey everybody, it's Mother's Day, Mother's Day. Hope you have all said hi to your mom. Well, how do I make this full screen? Send this link over to the Facebook group. Big, um, big chocolate show coming up. I don't think we could get more chocolatey than what we're going to do today. So that's pretty exciting. I hope there's some chocolate lovers that are going to be tuning in. And I hope some, if you're a non-chocolate lover, afraid to say it, might be the time, might be time to leave. Um, it's going to be, or maybe wait, try and be converted, you know? This is going to be heavy in the on the chocolate today. Let's see. Bum, 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 bum. Boom, posted. Multitasking. All right. Okay. Cool. I'm still curious about how to make this the YouTube studio thing. It's just like kind of crazy. I want to make my... Um, little image here larger because I zoomed in to zoom this in but now this is all zoomed in so it makes that smaller maybe that's okay maybe I can still read it 
how do you make this full screen? I feel like we're learning something new every Sunday. All right. Please. Yeah, it would just be nice just to like see what's going on. But how did we do it in the past? Because we've done it in the past, right? Where it was, my connection is unstable. Or, right. uh oh. Yep. Okay, well, um, let me know if you guys is good. Let me know just in the chat. I have the chat pulled up so I can connect with you guys. We're just gonna kind of like figure this out. Cause uh, you know, that's like, that. that's the motto for this whole self-isolation stuff, right? Quarantine, lockdown, whatever it's called. We're just trying to figure it out. Uh, but we got a big chocolate show in store for you guys. Um, for all the mothers out there and for all the people that have um, were born by a mother. It's a lot of us, I think. Um, but big chocolate show. We're, uh, I'll probably say this a few times. But for those of you guys that are here right now at this very moment, we are going to do flourless chocolate cupcakes. We're going to attempt a chocolate grenache, and we are going to attempt some tempered chocolate for decoration. So chocolate on chocolate on chocolate. And um, don't know how it's gonna go. I'm optimistic. I've never made this stuff before. We did tempered chocolate two weeks ago, and it worked out well. Um, but I also, we didn't do it with this particular chocolate and we did a different method. So we're just going to see. I'm going to move this table a little bit closer. So watch out. Okay. Thanks. We're still getting set up. But that's part of the, you guys get to experience like a part of the, a part of the journey. Um, okay. So our flourless chocolate cake. Why flourless, you might be asking. Well, my mother is uh, gluten and uh, gluten free. So she doesn't have any gluten. She doesn't eat any gluten. And I don't think she has any like as a pet or anything either. And so she is um, doesn't do gluten, hasn't for a long time. So I've grown up having to learn how to cook with that dietary restriction in mind. And this is a very simple recipe. And what I love about it is that the sweetener in the cupcake is actually maple syrup. So it's a, um, it's an unrefined sugar. <laughs> is that what that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. You know, Hey, I, um, Champagne Sunday crowd reporting in. Welcome, guys. You guys are coming up on a major milestone tomorrow. Is it tomorrow? Yes, it is. Yeah, tomorrow, Champagne Sunday crowd gets to have a very special celebration. And it's also Mother's Day for a very special member of the Champagne Sunday crowd. So happy Mother's Day, Laura. I hope you're having a fabulous day. It's beautiful. Spend some time outside if you can. Um, enjoy it. But uh, yeah, we were just talking about um, flourless. So um, we are going to be using a flower. We're going to be using almond flour. And the cool thing about almond flour is that uh, it comes from a nut. Who would have thought? And because of that, it actually has quite a bit of oil within the flour already. And so if all goes according to plan, so I've heard the cupcakes will be pretty moist without having um, a lot of other wet ingredients in them besides what's necessary because of the oils within the flour. Pretty cool and pretty exciting. Um, we're going to be using this uh, cacao powder. This is unsweetened. It's a, a dark chocolate. Um, some maple syrup, vanilla extract. Uh, so this coconut oil we're going to use to grease our uh, tin 
for our muffins, um, we got some eggs, some salt and baking soda. So really simple. And it is gonna take about 30 to 45 minutes to bake these. And then it's gonna take about another 20 minutes to cool them. Once they're completely cool, we're gonna pour over our chocolate grenache and then we will, fingers crossed, be able to put our tempered chocolate decorations all over it. So uh, this is a chocolate heavy episode. Um, had a lot of requests for chocolate. You guys get what you asked for. So we're gonna do that. Um, the first thing I wanna do real quick is just preheat the oven to 325. Now, some of you may know, I love to bake bread. And one of the things that little secret is my wonderful wife a few years ago bought me this giant pizza stone. And this thing is fantastic. It has a little character on it. And what it is basically this big ceramic plate. And um, what's really nice about having that in your oven is it diffuses the heat quite well. So it can be really hot on the bottom of your oven, especially if that's where your source is. And if you don't have a convection oven, uh, the, the heat can come up. And if you're cooking something at a very high temperature like bread, you can actually burn the bottom pretty easily if you don't have something like that. It's also great for making pizzas on. Problem is that thing takes an hour to preheat. Um, and if it's not preheated, it's gonna be cooling off everything around it. So I'm gonna take it out for cooking this. So we're setting our oven to 325. Dora, um, so glad that you're here. Your daughter made it safe and sound. Happy Mother's Day to you. Happy Mother's Day. Hope you heard that. That was Carissa shouting out Mother's Day stuff for you. Um, okay, here we go, guys. Um, focus. We're making chocolate cupcakes. Um, we had special requests from... My dad, we had special requests from Dora. I think Lucia, special requests as well for chocolate cupcakes. And maybe even some other people who didn't even know they wanted this much chocolate. You guys are getting it today. So the first thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna make our cupcakes. We're gonna throw them in the oven. We're gonna temper some chocolate and we're gonna try and make a chocolate grenache. Okay. And if you guys have made any of this stuff in the past, like feel free to chime in because this is actually my first time, um, as I mentioned, making the cupcakes, making the grenache, and my first time kind of tempering chocolate this way. So we're gonna see how it goes. I like to also say that stuff just uh, in case something goes horribly awry. Okay, so um, awry, awry, awry. I have a scale here, I love using scales, um, especially for baking. So I need it, <laughs> but unfortunately, <laughs> all of these measurements that I've taken down are not. So we'll just keep going. Okay, I need a, um, a half cup of cacao powder. And I'm going to, in this large bowl, this is where we're going to mix all of our ingredients. So I'm going to just go ahead and mix everything, all the dry ingredients first, and then we'll mix our wet ingredients. This is quite a bit of cacao powder. Jeez Louise. I'm gonna do a little less than, than half a cup. Okay. Then we need a half teaspoon of baking soda. A lot of hearts in the chat. Oh, it's so cool that you guys get to have little uh, conversations. Oh, I just had like shivers uh, I got goosebumps, like nails on the chalkboard, just like this <laughs> baking soda is so <laughs> crazy. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> that, was, that was a, when I was a kid, I had come up with, I was like, oh my, I've solved, I've solved the problem of being hot. And I was sitting on a bus coming home from school and it was very hot. We, I grew up in Texas, it's very hot. And I just remember sweating on the bus, no air conditioning and going home. And I remember just being so hot and I imagined, and if you're sensitive to chills, maybe cover your ears, but I imagined taking a popsicle 
biting down the popsicle and then pull, like pulling it out while the popsicle scraped on my teeth. And I'm getting like chills just thinking about that right now. It's like, I don't know if you've ever done that before. It's horrible, but it like, I, and then I, I cooled down. I was like, oh, I'm cold now. Uh, anyway, so try it next time. And my mom is here. Hi, mom. Happy Mother's Day. This is a special, we're doing this for you. Um, chocolate, chocolate, chocolate cupcakes that are flourless. Okay, let's get, let's get back on track, Paul. Focus, focus. Okay, half a teaspoon of baking soda. There we go. I also need equal part salt. So half a teaspoon of salt. I'm using this Morton's sea salt, but you can use kosher salt. Just don't use iodized salt. Never use iodized salt. Desalt your driveway with iodized salt. That's what I've been told. Happy Mother's Day. All the moms in the chat, thank you guys for being here. Happy Mother's Day. Okay, so there we go. Um, cacao powder, baking soda, salt. So we have one and a, cu one and a quarter cup of almond flour, half cup of cacao powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda. Oh my gosh, I need to get this away from me. Like still getting chills. Half a teaspoon of salt. Hey, the oven's ready. Look at that, okay. I'm just gonna whisk this to combine everything. Okay, have a little, having a couple of issues. Okay, having another issue. Actually, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use that for my um, wet ingredients too. So I'm just gonna use a fork for this. Just kind of combine it all. Oh man, guys, there's already a ton of chocolate. This is the same cacao powder that we used in our pavlova that we you uh, cooked. We released like a little over a week ago. That was a huge hit. Actually, my sister and niece made it, and they sent me photos. They made one in the shape of a heart. And niece is turning five this month. And so th that's a great recipe for kids. Maybe a little intense because you do have to whisk it for quite a while. That's something you don't see in the edit of the video. But, you know, like good food takes time. So just be patient. Teach your kids patience. All right, four eggs. So I'm going to go ahead and beat the four eggs. And then we're going to add our other wet ingredients, which is the vanilla syrup and the maple syrup. So how am I going to do this? Okay, compost. Any, any big um, Mother's Day plans or events? I know it's like we're socially distancing now, but does anybody... Uh, um, or if you can't answer that, any favorite Mother's Day memory from anybody? And uh, Carissa, who is um, hiding behind the computer, she doesn't have a microphone this weekend, but um, if you do want to chime in, feel free to. Okay, that's ready. The oven's, and you guys, I hope you guys are excited about this. You asked for chocolate and we're making chocolate. Okay, we're gonna whisk this up. Favorite Mother's Day. I mean, Mother's Day, the cool thing about Mother's Day is it's in May. So mothers are first before Father's Day. My dad always complained about getting the short end of the stick because his birthday every six years would fall on Father's Day. It was, you can kind of guess when he was born. And uh, look, love you, dad. <laughs> but you know, it's hard. It's hard to like, uh, it's hard to have birthdays around other holidays because it's just like, all right, dad, two presents for one. Tough life, tough life. Those dads born in June, June, right? Yeah, wonderful. It was a surprise. I know. I'm really happy that she got she was able to make the trip. Okay. Um, so we whisked together our eggs. Now let's do uh, three 
three quarters of a cup of maple syrup. So this is so this is a kind of chef's choice here. The more the more maple syrup you add, the sweeter it's going to be. We do need, I would say, probably a good half a cup just for the sake of consistency. Um, and the recipe I'm following is going to say three quarters of a cup. I'm going to go a little bit less than that. I mean, we're making a dessert. It needs to be sweet. Just don't go overboard with anything. You know, it's like lesson of life. So Aristotle would talk about that, you know, ethics. It's, it's not what's 100% right and what's 100% wrong. What's the mean between the two extremes? Other fun thing about ethics is that there, uh, the philosophers would say that there's no such, no such thing as an ethical prodigy. Prodigy, you know, like Mozart was a musician prodigy. He was like so good at music at age three. Like, and to be good at ethics, you need time. Think about that. Okay, we also need a tablespoon of vanilla extract. So we're gonna add that, excuse me, add that to our wet ingredients. Great, okay, I think that's everything. Correct me if I'm wrong. Oh man, baking makes me nervous because I, I, I love just doing things like over and over again uh, and perfecting them, yeah. But um, this is like, I don't know what I'm doing. We'll see how it goes. Let's oil up this uh, baking sheet. We don't have the little parchment paper cup things for cupcakes. Super easy, it is super easy. I'm just going to pull, it's, <laughs> It is officially summer in uh, our house, and you can tell because our coconut oil is liquid. <laughs> I think coconut oil melts around like 77 degrees or something like that. Um, so you can do it's warmer than that in our house. Uh, the brand of cacao powder is Navitas Organics. We get this at Central Market. So they just have it laying around. Um, but I mean, any like really good, uh, I'm sure you can find it online, maybe in other places as well. Um, but we, we buy it in the store there. You gonna say something? Oh, you're just, you're just, Looking at you. you're just peering around the corner. <laughs> yeah, really honestly, Carissa should be doing the chocolate episode cause like she's the chocolate expert. I just pretend to be one. Um, and so I'm kind of I was like, help me out here because, <laughs> uh, you know, I don't really know. Um, yeah, if anything will get you through a pandemic quarantine, it's chocolate. Yeah, if anything will get you through a pandemic quarantine, it's chocolate, she says. And I, I totally agree. Okay. These, this is kind of already a nonstick pan. So I don't really know how, and that, that's a liquid, we, you know, if it sticks, it sticks. I'm not going to, we're not going to get all uptight about it. Okay, so we're gonna fold all the ingredients together. And then we're gonna pray. <laughs> oh, goodness. Is anyone else nervous? I feel like this is the Sabrage 2.0. In fact, like, uh, oh gosh. I stayed away from baking for such a long time just because I, 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 I didn't like following recipes to a T. I liked to add things. Um, and so I always have to like double check everything. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to whisk this together. I did this in the pavlova too. I was like, I'm supposed to fold. And I'm like, I'm not going to fold. We're not going to take it. I want to make sure everything's well incorporated. I pretend like I know what I'm talking about. I have no idea. That's this whole cooking show guys. Secret. I'm kidding. I kind of maybe. No, do you know? Oh, by the way, yesterday, man, I got out there. I was, um, got out on the grill, fired up the smoker, fired up the grill, fired up the plancha, made a rack of lamb, made potatoes all of plancha, made asparagus. Um, it's going to be 
it's going to be quite a great little episode. It's kind of an ode to grilling. I got kind of cinematic with the shots. Got my, um, I, if anyone if anyone understands film gear, let me know. We can talk about what I was using, but kind of brought out some of the bigger guns in my arsenal, and it's uh, very exciting. That'll probably come out on Friday. Um, it's kind of like the bread episode, a little more poetic. Um, or in, I, I'm trying at least. <laughs> okay. Wow, Carissa, um, you, can you smell this? No, but I'm sure I will when it gets into the oven. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Happy Mother's Day, Denise. Yes. All right, here you go. This is what it looks like. I don't know if you guys can see that. Whoa, my goodness. I almost just poured it all over the counter. Okay, this really is Sabraj 2.0. Here we go. All right, so this is supposed to make 12, which is great because this is 12 right here. So it does look rich, doesn't it? Oh, man. All right. Okay, that's everything. Grease pan. All right, so just gonna start pouring this in. And I don't really know how much these are gonna rise, if at all. Okay. You know what would be nice is like a piping gun or something. Just like a piping vessel. I feel like, I feel like there is a better way to do this. Anyways, um, as you watch me pour these things into these tins, uh, I would love to hear anyone's uh, favorite chocolate recipe. If you were stuck on a desert island and you could only eat one recipe of chocolate for all eternity, what would it be? Seems like we have a lot of chocolate fans in here. Um, and so kind of asking the experts, one chocolate dish, what would it be? Carissa, what would yours? My favorite chocolate, mm, maybe, yeah, chocolate cupcakes are like a winner all around. Wow, really? My second favorite is maybe like chocolate. Chocolate mousse, mm, yeah. Mine would be when I worked at, and Chris has heard this story a bunch, but when I worked at, um, I worked at an Italian bistro, first job ever, when I was in high school, Cipollina in Austin. Very different now. It's now got table service, um, but it was owned by the same people who, who started Jeffrey's Restaurant, which was kind of one of Austin's first fine dining establishments. And um, it was back when I wanted to be a chef, so I started working at this restaurant. And the pastry chef for Jeffries was also our pastry chef. She would just kind of make a few things, bring it, um, bring it over on the day. She made a chocolate raspberry trifle, which is essentially, from what I could deduce, a brownie, a, a chocolate brownie. brownie that was like submerged in chocolate mousse with like a raspberry sauce, like all over the incorporated dark chocolate and raspberry. Man, that goes, in my, my opinion, goes so well together. And that is probably my favorite chocolate recipe for sure. Chocolate pavlova, wow. Wow, mom, that's awesome. Chocolate pavlova. I'm glad I made it for you. Took your recipe. That was a fun episode. That was uh, fun also just to have you to have more family call-in moments. Let's get everyone involved. Maybe someone could teach me how to make a champagne cocktail. Okay. Okay, guys. One chocolate raspberry trifle story later. And anyways, Belgian chocolate bar. Okay. Um, yeah. That would be really good. 
Yeah. Belgian chocolate bar. That would be nice. Yeah, that was really fun to have the meme on Tableau's episode. Yeah. Okay, some of these are a little more filled than others, but you know what? Hey, so is life. Life's that way. All right, let's throw them into the oven and um, everyone pray. Okay, 325 for 30 minutes. Okay, so we're going to cook that for 30 minutes. Um, let's see. 630. All right, so they'll be done at 7. Or we'll check them on 7. Okay, so next, um, we're going to temper some chocolate. This is going to be fun. <laughs> um, this, is, uh, this is also bomb if you're still watching the show. Uh, this is for you. This is a, um, we're going to experiment together on tempering some chocolate. So we're going to be taking, this is some semi-sweet chocolate. I'm really kind of partial to like bittersweet chocolate. I like a higher concentration of cacao. Um, something around like 70, 75%. But lo and behold, this is what we got. So we're just gonna use this. Um, and really what tempering chocolate is doing is taking the fat molecules in the chocolate and then you're heating them up to where um, you're looking in between 116 and 118 degrees Fahrenheit, which I think is like 46, 47 Celsius and you're heating it up to that point, and then all the fat molecules, like, whoosh, they like lock into a line, and then you cool it down from there, and it keeps aligned. But if you overheat, whoosh, they're just gonna go out of alignment, and then that, the problem there is that it melts easily, uh, gets like a, it's not glossy, it doesn't have a glossy finish, and it doesn't snap. So all those chocolate bars that you enjoy that snap when you break them, that's tempered chocolate. Um, they're, the easiest way to do it for us at home cooks is going to be a double boiler. And we don't really have that, but you're not dealing with super high temperatures. Um, so we're just going to put some glass on top of this pan and heat it up. Right? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Try not to make horrible, horrible sounds with that. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, here we go. All right, um, we'll use this bowl and let's see, how much should we make? Like maybe 250 grams, 250 grams of tempered chocolate. All right, so this is science. This is, um, that's all we're doing right now. This is doing science. Uh, the most important part of this equation is going to be a really solid digital thermometer. Um, because like we have to hit those temperatures. If we go over those temperatures, problems are going to occur. Well, I mean, it'll still harden back together and it'll still kind of crisp. It just won't be super, the most wonderful thing in the universe. We want it to be the most wonderful thing in the universe. Is this too much? Let's just do 200. Okay, 200, I'm being exact. Okay, so I have the water and put on the back burner, it's smaller. And again, like, if you, if you, if it goes above, if it goes above 116, 117, that butter zone, if it goes above like 118, you need to then cool it completely and then start the process again. And it just goes back to the science of what it is that we're trying to do. Um, and I don't fully understand. If you do, please let us know in the chat. But basically, it's, it's just aligning and it's realigning the, essentially, the cacao butter that's in the chocolate. So we're trying to align the proteins and the butter. That's the most important part. So we did it two weeks ago. What, what, what did we use? Like raw, it was like 100% cacao and we added our own maple syrup to it and we got it to work, which felt like a huge feat. Yeah. So feel really good about that. And if I was like, hey, we can do it with that. We can do it with this stuff. So famous last words. <laughs> Here we go. 
All right, so again, not super high temperatures, right? 118 degrees is not that hot. So uh, a lot of times it, it won't even look, um, you do wanna have it kind of like moving around. Don't hands, obviously. I'm gonna just use another spatula. Okay. And I won't, I don't need to be over here for too long. So I'll come back over here so that you guys can all see it. But basically, um, just a little description. Things are starting to move around a little bit more free. The chocolate's starting to melt. We're kind of getting like, kind of getting into that phase where it's like, ooh, it's starting to get hot in here. Like that Cisco song. Um, you can say Nelly. Oh, Nelly. Oh, thanks. <laughs> She's more than just a chocolate expert, folks. Speaking of, we got a, a question from Dora. Yeah. And she wants to know if the cacao powder is the same as cocoa powder. Ooh, that's a great question. What what is what is the uh, is cacao powder the same as cocoa powder? It is not the same. Yeah, I mean, you're kind of switching a couple letters around, but it looks really similar on the packaging, but they're actually pretty different. Mm. Um, so they both come from cacao beans, as all chocolate does. Uh, however, cocoa, C-O-C-O-A. C-O-C-O-A. Cocoa um, is more processed and at higher temperatures. Oh. So it's easier to bake with, but it doesn't have as Nutrients and vitamins and minerals. That are so that's cocoa. That's cocoa. Cocoa. And we're looking for cacao. Yeah, so today we're using cacao, which is um, less processed at a lower temperature. Uh, and still has all of those really great uh, minerals, antioxidants, great things that you can get from chocolate. Mm. Uh, the only thing is that it's not quite as sweet, but you know, we're using some sugar, so that's not really an issue in this case. Yeah, so if you guys couldn't hear Carissa, basically the difference between cacao powder and cocoa powder, cocoa powder is more refined at higher temperatures, and you lose a little bit of vitamins, minerals, nutrients in that process. Whereas cacao powder, what we're using, it's lower temperature less refined, less sweet, but you can always sweeten things as you go, but you get all the benefits of all of that really wonderful nutri nutritional value to your chocolate as well. I summarize that correctly? Yeah, good job. Okay, good. Good question. Good question, Dora. Keep the questions coming. Um, if I don't know it, I have one right next to Google for <laughs> me. Um, Okay, so we're just kind of warming this up. If you have a warming, like a, a, a warming pan, people will use like sous vide for this that um, you can put the cacao inside of a, a bag and submerge it in water and let it kind of get up to a super, you know, up to a decibel of a degree. Um, but most chocolatiers will, will use, they have specific like, chocolate um they have like real specific chocolate heating pads that kind of heat it up and you can really control the temperature and they'll use like these big marble slabs that have been cooled or heated sometimes they like put heating elements under it carissa needs a microphone carissa does need a microphone well um <laughs> carissa also <laughs> yeah uh we will work on that but i think uh, I can also talk. <laughs> I have a voice too. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna bring this over here because I don't really need this to be too much. Don't need too much more heat, I should say. Um, and so I'm already starting to kind of, it's already starting to get a little gooey. I'm just checking the temperature. I mean, this is like such a such a fine process. We're at about 86 degrees. So like the final temperature is going to be somewhere around this. Have some parchment paper off to the side here. And I'm going to use that to um, 
I'm going to try and make like some spears, some spears that I can um, break off and, and have some height into the cupcake. A little plating tip for you guys. If you're ever plating up a dish for someone and you want to make it extra special, height. Height is key. So if, if all your food is laying real flat, it's not very interesting. But if you can find ways to like stand up asparagus sticks or like put a put a shrimp like on its head, you know, that kind of stuff really makes for a vi visually very interesting for the for the diner. So so for our cupcake, because I'm not expecting these cupcakes to like really rise a whole bunch, I want to try and um, want to try and add some height. So I'm gonna I'm gonna attempt to do it through this tempered chocolate. Okay, we're up to 100 degrees already. All right, 105, 106. Things are really starting to melt. This is like a really hot day. You're, there's no, your chocolate bar does not stand a chance. 102, 104, 106, 109. Okay, hold on. Once it starts getting like real hot, I'll take it off this. Kind of, I'm speaking like I know exactly what I'm doing. I've done this once before. <laughs> Such is life. Okay. 105, 104. Okay. So we, we, we don't want it to be 111. Moving around. Sorry. I'm like really, I'm trying to really focus on this because I know how precise of a science this can be. 110, 112, 113. Trying to get it all on the sides too because we all want it to come up to temperature. 116, okay. Back down 114. I think there's parts of it that are 116. 115, 16. 116, 116.6, 117. Okay, this is great, guys. All right, I think we did it. We're at 117. We got up to 117. 116.4. Okay. There are areas that seem to be a little bit hotter. So we might have done a little bit too much. Who knows, you know? Like, we're going to find out. Tastes good. But I don't know if you can see. It's, it's just melt, though. And that's kind of the thing about... It's kind of the thing about this whole tempering chocolate is that it's it's really just uh, it's you're not getting it that much higher above its melting point. A lot of times when you're making something, when you're making like a chocolate or um, like a dessert, or it's like oh, just throw it in the microwave. And it's like you're just nuking it. You're getting it way too hot, and there's there's like no chance for for tempering. So what we're trying to do is just trying to be a little bit more precise about it. Okay. And then we just want to like slowly bring the temperature back down. At the end of the day, it, it's still chocolate. There's nothing wrong if, if this if this doesn't work or if yours doesn't work. It's still going to have a, still going to have a little bit of a crisp to it. It's still going to taste amazing. There's you know, this is just an attempt to try and do it professionally. I guess you could say. Um, and the nice thing about it is also it'll hold its and won't melt as easy. They'll have that crisp, they'll have a little shine to it. It's kind of the, it's the way that most chocolate should be. So we're gonna give it a go. All right. So we've, we've dropped down, we're now to like 114. So I'm just gonna kind of keep letting it cool naturally until it gets to about 90 degrees. And then at 90 is when I'm going to uh, start making some designs with it. You can do that now and just let it cool down on whatever surface. is that it's, um, it's still pretty runny right now. 
And so we want it to solidify a little bit more for our specific molds that we're trying to do. But yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty, it's a pretty thick consistency right now. Amazing. Yeah, it does. Melted chocolate. There's a few things that will definitely get people's attention. Chocolate. It's like, I mean, people who were like, oh yeah, let's like make chocolate. Also a fermented food, by the way. But man, like the people who discovered chocolate, what a process they must have gone through. All right. A little labor intensive, but you know, this is all just that labor of love. And then for our Grenache, it's, it's gonna be pretty simple too, actually. It's just chocolate and cream. <laughs> I have a little bit, I have some cream left over from the Pavlova episode. And I, I literally looked up chocolate and cream and it's Grenache. So you just like, you cut up a bunch of um, we're going to use these chocolate chips. It's better if you have baking chocolate, but you know, we, we have what we have and we're going to, um, heat up the heavy whipping cream and pour it over the chocolate and you let it sit for two minutes and then you whisk it all together and boom, chocolate Grenache. What cocktail complements chocolate? You guys are probably enjoying one already. Uh, I would say, I would say champagne, a champagne cocktail would go very well. You know, like um, a nice chocolate is a, is a dessert. So like stick in the dessert realm, stay away from like a chocolate martini or something like that. Do um, like do a port or a sherry or like um, a dessert wine would also go really well. Champagne. I mean, it's hard to beat champagne, champagne and chocolate, something dry. I mean, these are all going to be really sweet things, so be careful about too much sweet on sweet. But cheers, you guys. I hope you're enjoying a nice cocktail. What are you... Champagne. Champagne does go with everything. I remember um, I when I worked at, like, a wine store, people would come in and have very strange... Uh, very strange requests. And I remember like my manager who had like a really good palate, supposedly, I, I guess I didn't really know at the time. He always said that Indian food, Indian food and like Thai food were very hard to pair wines with because there's, it's just like such an onslaught of flavors and very hard to pair like a nice Pinot like Gris or Cote de Rhone or something with like a curry. Um, but champagne goes well with those flavors. Light, bubbly, it's fun. Okay, anyone want to guess what temperature we're at right now? How are we doing on time? Oh, great, 12 more minutes on the, uh, we're at right at about 100. <laughs> Carissa, what would you drink with? Champagne, hands down. Champagne, uh, champagne with chocolate. Put, like a little strawberry. Oh, a little champagne strawberry or a little like um, Kier, Kier Royale, mm -hmm. a little cassis. Is it cassis in the bottom of a Kier? Something. Or, it's an, um, or something really like vibrant, like a, a lemon. Mm. With chocolate, that's what yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, possibilities can be endless. Uh, you, I don't know if you guys can see this, but like, it, it is definitely like a lot more thick um, as it is cooling. It is a little bit shiny. I'm a little concerned. I, I saw like a few 119, 1, 120s whenever I was. Uh, when I was mixing it. So this might not have worked. That's kind of the fun thing about tempering chocolate. You just never know. I think I might have left it on the, the hot water for too long, but hey, you know, this is like, we're learning. 
the the fun thing is that you guys don't get to see all of the mistakes in the uh, in the normal cooking show. Can't hide stuff on the live stream. Uh, so yeah, we'll just see if this works. I mean, if it, if it doesn't work, it's still going to be wonderful as a little decoration. And if it does work, then hey, we'll have done it. All right. Let's see. Let's check in on the uh, the cupcakes as this is going to continue to kind of cool down a little bit. Oh, wow. They rose. Oh, my goodness. Maybe I should have been a little more careful about proportions. Baking with Paul. It's a, it's a fun adventure. But, you know, I, I wanted to do something that was um, that all mothers out there could appreciate. And... What's nice about this recipe is it's gluten free, so gluten free. Um, we do have eggs in the in the cupcakes, but uh, so I guess it's not vegan. Um, got some dogs barking outside. Henry is investigating. But the other nice thing about it is that because we were adding that maple syrup, you can really control the sugar level, which I love. I love that you can add more or add less. It's up to you. It's really important for when you're making desserts. All right. You know, I'm just gonna I'm gonna call it on this. I mean, I, I think we can we can wait for it to go down a little bit more, but yeah, we're like right about 95. We'll wait just a little bit longer. Those cupcakes that need at least another nine minutes. What, what do you guys, what do you guys think? Um, Laura posed the question, cocktails go well with chocolate. What have you had with chocolate that you've really enjoyed? I mean, I'm genuinely interested. Such a, you know, cause chocolate, I mean, especially really good chocolate, you get so many, you can get a lot of um, hints of fruit, red wine. I, yeah, mine would be actually really good. You know, and one of my favorite chefs, Francis Malman, an Argentinian, cooks everything over fire. He talks about harmony and dissonance. And many times, wine painting, for instance, is an example of harmony. It's like, what two flavors go well together? But he argues that sometimes you want dissonance. Sometimes you want champagne and a thick bread cut of meat, maybe a, a beef ribeye that's just been grilled on the on the on the stove or on your uh, on your a lot of basically a lot of people would say, oh, big, big, bold cab would go really good with that. But he's saying maybe not. And the inverse this isn't a nice piece, nice delicate piece of fish. It's like, okay, have a nice delicate piece of fish, but then pair that with a big bold cab or um, uh, Bordeaux. Red wine, red wine and chocolate. Yeah, I think that's a. There can be beauty and dissonance too. I guess that's his point. And I like that. Because I, I, I used to actually think that because that dissonance, it's, it goes against your expectation. And I think we're trained, especially um, when it comes to certain foods, like disgust is, is a survival instinct, right? It's like, oh, that's disgusting. You know, like rotten fish is disgusting. It's like, we shouldn't eat that, but rotten fish prepared the correct way. And I know I was saying rotten fish, but more of like a, yeah, there's like um, fermented, like in the curry that that video that I released on Friday had fermented fish paste. That stuff smells horrible, but it's delicious. And so it's like sometimes if you can, <laughs> I just cleaned my hands. I got more chocolate on it, of course. Uh, <laughs> sometimes if you can get past the disgust, if you can get past uh, what your mind is expecting you to have, it can be really delicious. Food for thought. Hey, okay. 
let's make um, let's make our little spears. Let's see if we can do this. Let's see if we can do it. I'm gonna wash my hand one more time. I think there's that little area of the spatula that I forgot about. Okay, so basically, if you try this at home, which I hope you do, because again, I mean, all we're doing is taking chocolate, melting it down, and then letting it hard up again. But if you want to temper chocolate, get yourself a thermometer, warm it up in a, in a double boiler, really not too much. I probably should have taken it off the heat once it got to like 108, 19, 109. I think I waited a little too long. So if you do it, that's what I would look for. Um, let it get up, and if you need to, just add add it back. Get it up to one between 116 and 118. 117 is your friend. Uh, and then take it off and let it cool down to 90 degrees, and then pour it into molds. They make silicon molds. You can make your own little chocolate truffles, little chocolate pieces. Um, you can make bars. You can do all sorts of things. You can, we could lay this out and then we could put like shaved almonds on it or coconut, dip strawberries in this. And then you have like a crunch when you bite into this chocolate covered strawberry. Thank you so much for joining mom. I'm so glad that you were here. Happy Mother's Day. I hope you try this tempered chocolate thing. Let me know how it turns out for you. And um, yeah, we'll save you some cupcakes. All right, here we go. So my idea is that it would just be kind of a kind of a beam. All right. Well, that's really interesting. I want to have some um, definition though, because it's going to have to hold up. So I don't want it to be too thin. I'm just thinking like beams of chocolate. Equal signs, railroad tracks. What does it look like to you? Well, it's holding its shape quite well. It is glistening. I don't know, maybe it worked. All right, I'm gonna try a real thick one, just in case. Oh, that looks cool. Maybe that's the way to do it. This one here. This is kind of fun. Oh, you can really, you can really uh, smell the cupcakes right now. Looks so good. Try some of these shorter ones, just in case. Uh... This is this is pretty fun. I mean, this would be another thing. I mean, besides nailing the temperature, which can be kind of difficult to do. This part of it can be a, quite a fun thing to do with kids or kids at heart. Because it's like, oh, what are we what are we doing? I'm liking those, like those little like teardrop things. I don't know how well these are gonna peel off this paper, but we'll see. Let's try doing a uh, for all my old school people, a pound sign. For all my new school people, a hashtag. <laughs> or inverse it, you know, maybe some old people like old stuff. Who knows if this is even gonna come off of this paper? I feel like that's that clip you could play. And then 30 minutes later, I'm like trying to take this stuff off. I'm having such a hard time. Okay. And then, um, okay, so I'm going to let that cool and let's do another one. Parchment paper.
almost seven o'clock, so I gotta make this one. Uh, Let's have fun with this one. Let's just like create a. Oh man. Let's just create, let's just add this whole thing out here. Create a big bar. Bar, big bar of chocolate. That's incredible. Carissa is saying it smells incredible. I agree. Let's create a little swirl. It's definitely firmed up, so it's got that going for it. Yeah. And then a little like paintbrush motif. Okay, we're just gonna let that harden up and then we'll see we'll see what happens. Let's check on our cupcakes, shall we? It's been 30 minutes. <laughs> Thanks, Laura. You set a timer for me. <laughs> it's 7 p.m. All right, here we go. You know, excuse me, the problem about oh, these dessert episodes is that normally we just eat the live stream. Uh, so, uh, so sorry, babe, I guess we're going to have cupcakes for dinner. I'll try that again. Okay. Wow. So I don't know if you guys remember what they looked like before they went in. And I don't know if you can see that too well. They're kind of dark, but um, yeah, they look pretty good. They're very moist. They're moving around pretty well. So I think I'm going to be able to get these things out. Obviously, like best way to test is I'm going to use chopstick. Probably not the best way, but. Coming out pretty clean. I think they're gonna be done. I'm gonna call it. Turning off the oven and we're gonna let these cool. So I'll give you a little bit of a closer view of them. That's great. Yeah. 12. Gonna let them cool in this pan right there. Okay. What else are we doing? Chocolate Grenache. <laughs> sure. Uh, this is an episode for the mothers out there and for the chocolate lovers. So for this, I need to take some of the some of the chocolate pieces. Oh, I actually need to weigh this out. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to for a chocolate grenache. It's um, it's a it's ratio of cream to your chocolate, and the it's normally like a one to one for a pretty runny one. And if you want like a truffle, like a real thick chocolate grenache, you do two to one, two parts chocolate, one part cream, and then inverse that if you want a really runny one. So we're gonna try um, eight ounces of cream and nine ounces of chocolate. Sound good? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I need some. I need someone to say something. Yeah. Um. Cool. We're just gonna dirty every bowl that we have. All right. So let's change this is to ounces. What am I doing? Okay. Is this right? The scare the scales freaking me out. Okay, hold on. I normally do this in grams. I could just weigh the I'm just gonna do that. 
you know, th oh, there, there it was. <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry, guys. I'm all over the place. Do you know who we we really needed? Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson was trying to get us onto the metric system hundreds of years ago, and we never did. And to this day, I'm like, man, if I had just learned the metric system as a kid, it was stuck in my brain. So I tried to, and I did for a period of time, but it's when you have recipes that are not, it makes it a little bit more difficult. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna weigh out our cream and grams. Great. It yeah, well, probably was right. 228. I'm going to put this on a low heat, but I do want it to get pretty hot. I do not want it to boil. Very important. Do not want it to boil. I want it to like around 195, 200. This, so that was 225, I said. So we're going to do, let's do 245. I'll do that. Okay. Now, um, I would like this to be a little bit more chopped up. This is going to make the melting process a lot easier. So I'm going to chop it up. It does look great, doesn't it? Those cupcakes look, actually turned out really good. I'm pretty impressed. <laughs> no, no roll. I'm, I mean, I'm going to be pretty rustic with it. But that cream is going to come in. It's going to settle in, melt. It should be pretty good. Are you guys still there? I just got a little notification that the connection was unstable. Everyone's live streaming these days, um, I guess. How's everyone? Uh, so now that we're doing the chocolate episode, any other requests for shows for live stream? I do have a request from my niece. Um, uh, she very cutely asked me if I could make something. Could you make something that I like to eat? <laughs> like she doesn't like to eat any of the other things that I was making. Her requests are for tacos, specifically bacon, egg, and cheese tacos. <laughs> so, that great. so that may be incoming, depending on what you say right now. I'm glad we got to do the chocolate episode, though. Okay. I don't want that to get too hot, and I still have a little bit of ways to go, so I'm going to... Krista, is there something that you want to see? Um, I, speaking of Lucia, I want to see the, the Lucia challenge. The Lucia challenge? Yeah. What's that? Running? Yeah, running, yes. <laughs> Sunday brunch episode. Yeah, we should do that. Next week, I think we're going to do... Um, a pretty special episode. It's going to be a uh, picnic episode and we're gonna have Katie, our friend Chef Katie back on the show. She's gonna show us a couple of things to make for your next picnic, stuff that's gonna be easy to do and easily uh, transferable. Um, we're also going to talk about cheeses, olives, wines. It's gonna be pretty decadent. Um, and it, which is great because that lamb episode is also very decadent. Um, so she's going to be coming in next um, next Sunday. And we're probably going to do an earlier time for that, probably somewhere in the afternoon, early afternoon. Um, yeah, I'm excited to have Katie back. She was uh, She's great, has a lot of knowledge. So bring your picnic questions next Sunday. Well, yeah, we'll probably do it. Um, we had talked about doing it this weekend and it ended up being Mother's Day and it just kind of, the timing didn't really work out too well um, just with the other obligations that we had. 
She's opened her bus again at Independence Brewery. Uh, it's only for takeout, but you can get stuff from her to go. We got a Chilean or a Peruvian shepherd's pie that she made, which was delicious. It's very comforting, very comfort food oriented. But it's over at Independence, which is in South Austin, um, just south. It's in the kind of a warehouse district south of 71, over kind of by the airport. And you can order online from Independence Brewery, and uh, you can get food to go, and you can get beer to go, too. So if you want to grab some beer, grab some food, it's a great option. But she'll be on next weekend. We'll promote that show up more. So all you loyal uh, viewers, you guys will get to see all the Wayfair people coming in. It'll be exciting, though. It's always fun. Um, it's always also a fun technical challenge. So I'm glad that uh, I'm gonna have Carissa in the corner fielding all of that stuff. Because it, it can be a lot. It'll be great. It will be great. Um, but yeah, speaking of the Olympia challenge, I couldn't find the paper because she made that menu. Oh, that's right. Yeah. It was like all the all the foods that she liked, and it was like um Asparagus, green beans, tomatoes, a cookie to make it sweet. And some cashews. Oh, and there's some cashews. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Well, the chocolate's looking good. I mean, it's pretty shiny. I'm happy with it. It's shinier than it was. So we did something. Um, now, will it peel off the paper? That's a great question. Might have missed a step in order to do that properly. Okay. This just seems like way too much chocolate. No such thing. Well, it seems like too much chocolate for the amount of cream that we have. But, I mean, I don't know. I am no, I'm no expert. Yeah, I, I remember it being like a one-to-one -one ratio and it's practically one-to-one. -one. I mean, I weighed it even, you can weight it. Did you, you, I think maybe just ate like volume. Well, I, I weighed it. Should I not have weighed it? What's 200 and here's a question. What's 200 and never too much chocolate? Of course. Uh, what is 240 grams of chocolate in ounces? Is it a volume to volume one to one? That's a Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> It seems like it would be weight one to one. Okay, well, I mean, if it was eight ounces, we would need a cup, which is practically this whole thing, anyways. 1.01 cups. Okay, see, exactly. But that's volume, whatever. It's fine. This, you know. Psh. There's never too much chocolate. <laughs> All right, and oh, these are not twisting. That one is a little bit. Okay. So this cream is getting pretty hot. I wanted to check the temperature. Okay, so it's, it's the cream is like pretty hot. I don't want it to get too hot because otherwise it will separate. It's boiling. Um, and we are... Just kind of simmering on the edges. We're getting little bubbles around the around the edges. And 1.01 cups. Old man says it must be true. Awesome. Great. So I guess this wasn't a true eight ounces. I'm glad I made it. All right, and then we're gonna add this into the chocolate. That looks right. And then we're gonna let it sit for two minutes. And I'm going to, as um, a backup, 
just in case we need it. Just have a little like double or boiler action just ready, just in case it's not melting all the way. So I'll wash this pan out. So you guys, uh, it's like 7.15 and we've cooked everything already. It's amazing. Now we just get to plate everything up in a really fun way. I know the Grenache doesn't look like a Grenache right now, but it will in a minute, I promise. Actually, I don't promise because it's my first time making it. We're gonna be on the adventure together. All right, here we go. Just gonna have that on standby. Oh, if, um, if you missed it, the cool thing about doing this on YouTube, you can rewind. So it won't be live, but you can always rewind and see what happened. So fun. That's kind of why we chose to, this platform to do the live show. It just seemed um, it's archived for future use, future viewing. So if you guys ever want to come back and rewatch something, or if you remember a recipe, like we've done some pretty cool stuff. Like I, that bun, the bun bowls that we did a few weeks ago, that turned out great. Oh, and then the the um, chicken that we made with the chilies, the adobo sauce, that was, man, we, um, all this week, we've been using that avocado sauce that we made last week. Yeah, it was so, it was so good. That avocado sauce is primo. That is, if you want to, if you make anything from any of these live sh shows, that's the thing to make because you can just, you can add it to anything. Get a little bit of heat, a little bit of creaminess, zestiness. It's fantastic. Isn't that right, Carissa? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna whisk that all up together. Oh, I keep that going. It's been a couple of minutes, so okay, it's working. Wow, look at that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Ooh, this is so decadent. This is decadence. I mean, that was easy. That's how you make Grenache. And then this will cool down and it should harden up. It should harden a little bit as it cools. Um, but man, the color on this is amazing. It's like a, like a mirror. This is great. How are you going to use this ganache? I'm going to pour it over the top of the cupcake so it's like the frosting. So we'll put it over the top of the cupcakes and then we'll like put all these chocolate spears in it and it'll be like a chocolate explosion. Perfect. Yeah, that's, yep. Uh, thank you. Yeah, we normally have tried to, in terms of the having the camera closer, we've we've tried that in the previous live streams, and the um, didn't have the second camera set up today, but we will in the future. Always try and think about that experience. I'll see if I can get this even closer. My lighting is a little. Uh, let's see if we can tilt it down. Let's see if you can. I don't know if you guys can see that if it's too dark. Come on, camera. This is the web, you know, it's the other issue here. I'm using a laptop. Uh. Nice. Okay. We're back. Wow. You want to try this? You want to come be my official taster? Carissa, everyone. <laughs> Class. <laughs> there you go. Is it good? That's amazing. I mean, <laughs> it's like chocolate and heavy cream. Yeah. Not yeah. Chocolate and heavy cream, everybody. What is not to like? Yeah. Yeah. Henry's excited too. Henry's excited. Unfortunately, he cannot have any of this. I mean, we ne we never give him anything, but he he is banned from having any of this stuff. 
Okay, so we've made our flourless chocolate cupcakes. The tin's quite cool, so I can do that. They look amazing. Um, in fact, this one, the one that we checked, looks like it might be the less done one out of all of them, and it looks pretty well done. Um, we made our flour, that was essentially, it's just almond flour, cacao powder. Um, we used some maple syrup, baking soda, vanilla extract, uh, and put them in a coconut oil greased um, cupcake sheet, threw it in the oven for a mere 30 minutes at 325. Came out great, put them in the middle, middle rack, by the way. And then we tried our hand at tempering some chocolate. Um, it's looking pretty good. The tempered chocolate, it still needs to cool a bit though. Um, so I don't know if that's gonna be ready in time, but we have the, um, we have the, and then we made the chocolate ganache. Ganache. So that's a simply, simply heavy cream heated. We got to about 165. You don't want to get too hot, otherwise you're going to start separating your cream. You're going to start making other things. Um, and then we chopped up our semi-sweet chocolate. Put the heavy cream with the chocolate. Let it sit for a couple of minutes, and then we whisked it all together to get this rich rich sauce. Okay, let's plate one of these up. Uh, in fact, should we sh 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 put this in the fridge? Does it, would it, would it, would it be okay if I threw it in the fridge, you think? Um, it should be okay. It's been cooling for a while. Sometimes it just gets like a little coating, mm. but it's still good. Yeah. Could you come grab the door for me? Because I'm not sure where I'm going to be able to put it. Uh, um, yeah, do you want to? Okay. Any... Uh, any questions? Any questions while we're waiting on that? There's not um, not too much more to do. I'm just gonna grab one of these cupcakes out of here while she's grabbing that. This guy looks like. I think that, yeah, this is when having that parchment, oh, but it just pops right out of it. Oh my. Goodness. Okay, let's do two. For the all the moms out there. Hmm. This almond flower is quite impressive, I must say. Look at look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. See if it, the problem is that I'm showing this. Could you turn that light a little bit this way? See, it has that other light right, right next to it, but you might be able to. You can just, uh, if you loosen the handle there, yeah, loosen it and then you can rotate it. I'll move this one. We're moving the set around, guys. Oh, there we go. Perfect. So there you can kind of see we've got a little, the cupcake it rose a little bit. Yeah, it looks it's nice got, and light. Nice light. Got the airiness in. Yeah, the dog is all into it. <laughs> this is the Kirkland maple syrup. Yeah, we got a, uh, the brother and sister-in-law got us a Costco membership right before the pandemic. And that ended up being a great thing because it's like uh, we were able to stock up a few months ago on all of the necessities, maple syrup being one of them. Okay. Um, this is like going to be really interesting too. You know, let's like put the, uh, let's like make a little bar with this. Do you want to grab something too? So we have this chocolate that's been sitting here and we're just gonna 
throw in, these are some goji berries. So we'll just throw in some of these dried goji berries there on top of this. Salt or something like that? Yeah. Oh. You want to see really extra chocolatey? Some cacao nibs. Cacao nibs on top of our chocolate. Wow. Leave it to Carissa. Chocolate on chocolate on chocolate. <laughs> oh, man, that's great. That's fun because then you can just have like chocolate the rest of the week. Okay, well, you know, I think I'm just going to, I think we're just going to call it, I will, um, we'll take some photos, we'll share it on the next live stream, because I think this is, I think they're going to take a little, they're going to take a little while to cool off. Chocolate making is an art, and I don't want to get in the way of um, all the chocolatiers out there, but we'll definitely share it with you. At the very least, we made some cupcakes. We made a chocolate ganache, and then we potentially tempered some chocolate that we can put on top of it. Um, yeah, because I'm just looking at this stuff, and it's it's also like not quite set, so I think it needs a little bit more time. Um, and you don't want to rush it; just want to let it hang out. So I'm going to, yeah. All right, everyone. Um, this was a fun one. And, um, you know, I'm glad that we got to do, I'm glad that we got to do chocolate because, uh, I know that was something that you guys were asking for and, uh, I hope this delivered. I'm just going to create like a little pool on top and then let it find its way down. Oh, and this one might need a little bit more. And, you know, like dessert before dinner. Hey, there's like worse things that could happen in the world, right? Oh goodness, there it goes. Wow. It almost has like that mirror glaze look to it. So Chris, I'm gonna need you to try this with me because I've made two. Wow, these are beautiful, Paul. Okay, everyone. So give them a glamour shot up close. Yeah, let's see if we can. We also have these these dark colored plates that are probably, but there you go, guys. Little, they look like those like little Miss Debbies or whatever. <laughs> yeah, those what hostess. Or ho yeah. <laughs> Life is uncertain. Eat dessert first. Hey, you know that's very true. Cheers to that. Anyone ever imagined they would be here? Two and a half months ago, like I sure didn't. Uh, so can you taste the maple syrup in the cupcakes? Good question. Let's give it a try. Oh, wow. It is soft. Oh, my goodness. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> well, there's definitely a lot of chocolate. Mm-hmm. But the cupcake's not overtly sweet. Mm -mm. The ganache is but pretty sweet. The ganache sweet. is sweet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So no, not really. It has an oiliness to it that you're going to get from using the almond flour and then the coconut oil. And then I think a part of that is also going to come from the maple syrup too. Yeah. The There's a little bit more of a depth to the sweetness of the, of the cupcake itself. Yeah. It's just not sugar. Yeah, but it's then like, you get mm. that pop of sugar from the ganache. Yeah. Oh, that's fair. That's lovely. Yeah, it is really good. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> Those aren't Debbie's. Yours looks scrumptious. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it has a very similar look. Yeah. It looks, I really mean. Really nice shine, babe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the shine is really good. We're really happy with that. Well, thanks everybody. Thanks for the recommendations. Mm -hmm. We will, I'll document the um, 
tempered chocolate process. I'll post it in the Facebook group, and then I'll um, I'll be sure to add a little add a little tribute to today's episode and next week. And next week is our very special live show where we're going to have Chef Katie again, remotely chiming in to the to the live stream. Always a lot of fun. Um, we're going to be making items for a picnic. So if you guys have any um, special requests or anything, I'll put a poll up in the in the Facebook group. Like, go there. That's where we'll be looking for some of your feedback. But we have a few ideas up our sleeves. We're going to be talking a lot. We're even going to involve some local producers, take a couple of little field trips um, that will take you along. So it's going to be a really, it's going to be probably the most produced live video so far. It'll be next week. Um, and keep a lookout for a YouTube link that will have all the information. But it will probably, it'll probably be earlier in the day, not in our normal 6 p.m. time slot. It'll probably be around um, between 12 and 2, let's say. And it'll probably be a longer one, too, probably closer to the two hours. And I'm so glad you guys just have all these little conversations for yourself. <laughs> but happy Mother's Day. And to all the mothers who are so sweet for not only giving us the gift of life, but for being our greatest nurturers. So thank you, Mom, for watching. Thank you, Dora, Laura. Thank you for all the other moms that were here. Thanks to everyone who has a mom. Um, so that's like, I mean, anyone who was born into this world came into this world through they're a wonderful mother. So we all, um, this is a very special day for all of us, not just all the moms. So very grateful for all of them. And thank you guys. Thank you guys for being a part of this. This is a fun little um, little voyage down Sugar Lane. And uh, I'm glad you guys were here for it. So let us know if you have any, any recommendations um, for future shows, but like really mark your calendar for the picnic show. That should be a lot of fun next week. It'll be great. Okay, everyone. Thank you. Take good care. We love you guys. And see you in a week. Bye.